Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's global launch of the Child Rights and Child Rights Impact Self-Assessment Tool for mobile operators. I can see that uh, participants are still coming in and joining, but we have one hour and a lot to get through, so let's get started. My name is Josiane Galia Barron. I'm a member of UNICEF's Child Rights and Business team in Geneva, focusing on the digital sector, and I'll be facilitating this session. We're really excited to share more about the, the tool and to hear from our fantastic panel. But uh, before we get started, just a few quick notes of, of housekeeping. This, this webinar will run for, uh, for about one hour. Uh, if you'd like to connect uh, and communicate with our panelists, please feel free to do so in the, in the chat. Uh, we'll address as many of those comments as we can in, in this hour, but if we don't have time, then, then of course we will connect with you also after, afterwards. We are recording this uh, and we will be making it available afterwards for any colleagues who weren't able to join us live, so, so do stay tuned for that and, and feel free to, to share it. We have a great panel with you, with us today. Uh, we're joined by Anne Euler from GSMA, Bongani Dlamini, a young rights advocate from South Africa, Marco Obizo from the ITU, Mauricio Acre from Millicom, and Moira Thompson Oliver from Vodafone. But before we kick off, I'd like to introduce Carla Haddad Mardini, the director of UNICEF's private fundraising and partnership division in Geneva, for some opening remarks. Over to you, Carla. Thank you, Josie. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. A warm welcome to all participants and panelists attending this global launch of UNICEF's updated Child Rights Impact Self-Assessment Tool for Mobile Operators, also known as MOCREA. So work on the first MOCREA Self-Assessment Tool began more than five years ago in close collaboration with the industry. UNICEF would like to thank all the companies who have shared their experiences in using the original tool or piloted the new version during the first months of this year, as well as other stakeholders who have contributed their time and expertise to make this edition as practical and comprehensive as possible. Mobile operators play a crucial part in facilitating children's access to the digital environment and to a world of information and opportunities to exercise their rights by connecting, learning, playing, and taking part. The intensified role that the internet connectivity is playing in supporting children's continuing education during the pandemic underlies this and underlines this. Um, we've seen it everywhere uh, with the disruption in the education of children worldwide. At the same time, there are multiple risks to children's rights online, spanning from risks to children's personal data to online harms such as grooming and cyberbullying, to name a few. The digital environment is undoubtedly a space where mobile operators can make a big difference to children's rights. For example, they can fight the dissemination of child sexual abuse materials, promote internet safety information to children and parents, integrate child rights considerations into product development and so much more. But the responsibility of mobile operators to respect children's rights is not just about what happens online or a dimension of the delivery of online services. Like all businesses, mobile operators have a responsibility to respect rights throughout all aspects of their operations. And this includes their relationships with employees, business partners, and other key stakeholders. Child rights impacts can be found in how companies manage their facilities and assets, their employment policies and benefits, as well as how they market and deliver their products and services, whether this is done directly or through business partners and suppliers. In recognition of this, the new version of the MOCREA self-assessment tool we are launching today aims to help mobile operators to examine their child rights responsibilities holistically in a way that covers all of the areas outlined in the children's rights 
and business principles, the workplace, the marketplace, and the community. Much has changed in the five years since the original Mokriya Self Assessment Tool was developed. The digital sector that mobile operators are part of has evolved, and so has the practice of human rights and child rights impact assessment. More is expected from companies by consumers, by governments, and by the communities. Calls by various stakeholders for companies to carry out human rights due diligence of their operations and wider value chain will only continue to intensify. Current developments at the EU level are a testament to this. The Mokria self-assessment tool offers a simple and yet comprehensive framework for mobile operators to work towards responding to these expectations by building a deeper understanding of child rights challenges, opportunities, and impacts related to their business. Children are key stakeholders for mobile operators. For all of, the, all of us who have children, we see it. Key stakeholders and potential consumers. I invite you to take advantage of this tool to drive efforts to maximize positive impact on children's rights. Thank you again for joining us today, and we look forward to working closely with you in the future. Thank you. Over to you, Josie. Thank you so much, Carla, for those opening remarks and for joining us. I would uh, like to, before we plunge into a quick overview of the Mokria self-assessment tool itself, I, I would also like to introduce and, and hand over the floor to Bongani Dlamini to help ground our discussion uh, today in a, in a first-hand experience of growing up in, in such a connected world. Bongani is a politics and international relations graduate from the University of Johannesburg. He's very passionate about young people's issues and his advocacy work with UNICEF. He started volunteering with UNICEF from the age of 14 and is currently serving as one of the ITU's Generation Connect African Group envoys, playing a critical role in contributing to the inclusion of African young people in digital conversations. Thank you, Bongani, for being with us. I have a question for you, given all of your experiences. Um, in your advocacy and in connecting with children and young people about online safety and issues relating to rights online, especially during COVID, what from your perspectives are some of the key opportunities and challenges that the industry can play a role in, in acting on? Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, good morning, um, good evening to everyone based on where you're from. Um, thanks for this opportunity. And as it's been said, my name is Bongani Jamini. I am from South Africa. I'm a young person from South Africa. And just to answer your question, I think um, at the moment, quite recently, there's been a lot of talks on fourth industrial revolution and um, basically um, the new world order opportunities that come with it and how we need to prepare ourselves. But in that very same discussion, I think there is a lot that's been missed. When I say there's a lot that's been missed, I think some critical issues that are basically um, focusing on young people that are experienced by young people uh, addressed. And I think we saw this quite recently in 2020, when most schools had to close down, or most companies had to close down. That actually re uh, that actually exposed the inequality gap when speaking to um, digital inclusion. And some of the very critical issues I can say. Um, that 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 um, I experienced by young people, um, I can say it's poor internet uh, connectivity, and so can I just also just uh, um, try and reference as I speak to this. So the very first key issue that is is experienced by young people is poor quality of internet connectivity. Um, the implement implementation of four G is not effective in Ivory Ivorian national territory. Um, transmission rates not up to required standards, according to the World Bank, World Bank, it could cost Africa $100 billion to achieve universal access to broadband connectivity, which is very costly considering most countries do not have stable um, economies. Secondly, um, the high cost of devices for accessing internet, according to um, the World Bank itself, um, around billions of people all, all around the world um, the world finds itself extremely 
um, expensive to, pay, to purchase mobile um, devices. Um, expensive cost of cell phones, laptops, internet gadgets is then hindering most young people from being active digital citizens. Um, the lack of um, functional ITC community centers is also another critical, critical issue that needs to be addressed. Um, and I think that is a very um, fundamental thing in, in speaking to um, the role that um, mobile operators can also play um, and also try and contribute in, in ensuring that more young people and children are active digital citizens. Um, I think the lack of um, content in local language as well, I think it's a very critical issue that also needs to be addressed moving forward. Um, the World Bank in one of the main, the World Bank um, also believes that um, the main reason why people aren't connected, it's because of content that is online and isn't in local language that everyone can relate to and quickly understand. And I think some of the opportunities for young people and companies maybe that they can take going forward is ensuring that um, we try and have maybe competitions, if I can say, or challenges within young people and companies that, in, that are based on innovation and internet rights. I think another thing that we can also try and do is boosting and ensuring that um, employment for young, uh, for young networks and tele telecom engineers. I think secondly, another thing that we can also try and do and an opportunity maybe that we uh, companies and young people can also try and do is um, have boot camp, boot camp programs, conferences, exchange programs and events for young people to self-develop themselves, um, have more information on internet, uh, um, on, on the internet as well as the digital space, um, have that experience in terms of exchange, uh, cultural experience between um, people who are more experienced on the internet itself, as well as um, young people who are still trying to understand and navigate that space. Investing in urbanization, um, urbanized cities as a means of development in their in digital infrastructure and helping the advancement of young people in tech. Um, access to internet will also promote the creation of online services, building young people to start up their businesses, for customers around the world. Um, the, living of, the cost of living in Africa, are, the living costs in Africa, sorry, are less than uh, many other places. So services can be sold at um, competitive prices. Shared businesses can also be formed with international corporations among young people and further growth. Um, but yeah, I think, basically what's really important and that needs to be invested in mostly is ensuring that there is proper infrastructure for young people to access um, the digital space and security as well. Um, online safety is a very critical issue, which um, I think should be very considered in, in, in this discussion. And I think the guide is very important. It's very important um, because it allows um, companies and the industry to play a really critical role in prioritizing children's rights, ensuring that um, there isn't any um, child labor activities taking place in any of their um, engagements, being it with their partners or in the activities that they're doing as, 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 as companies. And um, yeah, I think today's conversation is really important and today's launch is really important because it basically speaks to that, it speaks to creating that safe environment for children and basically prioritizing their rights. Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but um, yeah, I think that's my contribution for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bongani, for, for those interesting reflections and for sharing your, your experiences. It's very, uh, it's it's great to hear directly from from you what you're what you're seeing and what you feel are some important priorities and opportunities to consider. So thank you for for being with us. I I would like to share now very briefly uh, a couple of minutes uh, uh, a presentation to 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 discuss the 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 Democria tool itself. Um, including what you can expect from the update and to share some details about next steps and where we're going with, with the tool now that it is uh, available. Can I confirm you can see my slide? Yes, we can. Great, thank you very much. So 
firstly, very briefly, why, why child rights? And, and I think this, this has already come up and will come up again. Uh, children are anybody under the 18 and they are a very large stakeholder group. They make up almost one third of the world's population and they interact with businesses every day as consumers, family members of employees and, and in other ways. And as we know, children can be disproportionately, severely and permanently impacted by business activities, operations and relationships in the words of John Ruggie, a former UN Special Representative for Business and, and Human Rights. And this is another reason why it, it's so critical for companies to make dedicated efforts to understand and address their impacts on, on child rights. What are some core issues for mobile operators? As we've already seen, there are issues in the workplace, the marketplace and the community and the environment as outlined by, this, by the children's rights and business principles. And here are a few examples. In the workplace, issues like family friendly workplace policies and child labor in the marketplace, fighting child sexual abuse materials and online safety and commercial practices and in the community, things like children's rights and the provision of security services and impacts resulting from the building and operating of mobile infrastructure. These are just some examples, but they're all uh, addressed by, by the tool itself. So what, what is the MOCREA self-assessment tool? It was first developed and published in collaboration with Millicom and DNV. It's great to have Millicom Mauricio here with us today. And it's been updated over the last several months. What is it? It is a, it is a self-assessment tool for mobile operators to understand their impacts on children and how well these are currently managed. It consists of a, a, an assessor guide, which you can see on screen and an Excel based tool, which we'll preview very briefly in, in a moment. So why, why have we updated Mokria? Firstly, there is a much increased focus on the digital environment. There's a new section dedicated to these topics. And in general, we've consolidated, simplified and updated the guidance. For example, there used to be a separate UNICEF child online safety assessment tool. And now all the relevant aspects of that have been incorporated into this one document for mobile operators. And we've also benefited from experiences and inputs from several companies who've, input, who've implemented the original version to help us streamline and simplify the tool to make it as usable as, as possible. And how some improved guidance and enhanced guidance on the methodology can be found in the guide, including suggestions on how to implement it, but also in reflection of the fact that MOCREA is a self-assessment, really highlighting the importance of additional uh, instruments, you know, stakeholder engagement and external communications of results as part of the child rights impact assessment. So some steps in the MOCREA self-assessment process can be seen on screen and the guide has really gone into a lot more depth about each of these steps. And I, I invite you to have a look at the, at the guide that was shared in, in the chat link to, to have a look at more details about what, what the process involves. Here's what the, the tool itself looks like in Excel. This, it has seven main sections. This is a preview of one of them on procurement and each of these themes have several baseline expectations and further actions and the and the tool is interactive to help guide through in answering the different questions. In addition to the Excel, there's also a guide that gives a lot more information about each of the indicators to help explain issues to colleagues and to really understand what the topic is trying to get at. Another way of using the guide is when it comes to interpreting and acting on MOCREA results. For example, there might be a further action item with, with some guidance to help inspire and guide the way for designing uh, future actions on a particular topic. But the tool also generates some, automatically generates some visuals to help identify areas of, of particular gaps or strengths to inform next steps. Um, and, and of course, it's also extremely valuable to, to engage with, with expert stakeholders to help prioritize actions following, following the, this assessment. So I hope that's a useful overview of what the, the process looks like. Uh, we uh, are very excited to see companies take this on and, and implement the process. UNICEF and GSMA will be working together to deliver a series of action-oriented workshops for 
operators on implementing the tool and we invite all operators who are interested in, in really taking this to action to join us. There will be three sessions between September and November and it will cover all you need to know to successfully manage a mockery self-assessment process, to hear some tips and to ask questions. So if you are interested, really be keen to, to hear from you and uh, that would be uh, great to, 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 to see some uh, action taken from, from the tool. I'd also like to thank everybody who contributed their time and expertise. As, as Carla mentioned, this has really been a much enriched process with all the inputs. So I will leave it there. And I will go back to our panel. Uh, and firstly, I'd like to invite Anne Euler to, to take the floor. Anne is currently the Sustainability Director at the GSMA, which represents the interests of mobile operators worldwide, uniting more than 750 operators and almost 400 companies in the broader mobile ecosystem, and works with GSMA member companies to drive responsible business models and practices. And Anne, I was wondering, can you describe GSMA's recent work relating to business and human rights, particularly how do child rights feature within this and what do you see as the value of the MOCRIA self-assessment tool to GSMA members? Sure, thank you very much and thank you very much for having me and congratulations on, on the launch today. Um, it's really great to see to see the updated, the updated tool. Um, yeah, as you just said in, in the introduction, so I work specifically with our members to kind of support them in, in driving uh, more sustainable practices that a really, really big focus last year has kind of been everything around human rights. We um, produced an introduction to human rights for the mobile sector, as well as some more detailed guidance for the industry. So our introduction was mainly aimed at members who were kind of just starting out and trying to understand their responsibilities around human rights, covering kind of the main international frameworks and why businesses should think about any of this um, in the first place. And then um, when we talked about a little bit more guidance and, and detail, we covered a lot of the salient issues for the industry in more detail. Um, some of them um, were privacy and freedom of expression, uh, labor standards in general, conflict minerals, but also uh, child rights and safety online, as well as child labor specifically. Um, this was also accompanied by a webinar series and specific interest from members was around um, modern slavery, forced slavery and human trafficking, as well as specifically child rights and safety online. And I think what is what is really important to note in all of this is that even if it doesn't have the word children in it, um, a lot of these issues always touch on the lives of children and mobile operators affect children through the many ways that they manage their facilities and assets and how they develop and produce products and services. So that's where, I think the more career tool can, can be really helpful and it's really good to see, you know, some of the more increased focus around around online because I think that's certainly how things have changed and something that's that's really necessary. And at the same time, I think um, people might not be aware, but I think it's one of the few sector specific um, tools. So I think there is a real opportunity for our industry to to show some leadership and um, it's also great that you can use it at group level, you can use it just simply at operations level, and also you don't have to look at all the issues at the same time. So you can look at specific sections to find out a little bit more on this, um, how specifically your business is affecting these issues or where specific risks and opportunities lie. Um, so that's where I think it you know, can be really, really helpful and, just you mentioned the series of workshops that we are organizing for the autumn. So if you are interested in taking part and learning a bit more on how to really practically use the tool and implement it, then uh, do get in touch and be good to see you here. Uh, back to you, Josie. Thank you so much, Anne, for, for sharing and for taking part. We're also really looking forward to those workshops and we, we, uh, we hope to see many, many operators taking part with us. I'd like to, to now hand it over to Moira Thompson Oliver to, to, to share an industry perspective on really why, why look at child rights. Moira joined Vodafone in February this year and is responsible for Vodafone's human rights program across the group, 
Previously, she set up and led BT's human rights program and before that held a number of roles in BT's legal team, most recently as head of legal corporate responsibility and environment advising on environmental issues and charity engagement. Thank you so much Moira for, for joining us. I was wondering as a first as a first question, why in your perspective should mobile operators look at child rights impact specifically? Hi, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to, to the panel for this important event. I think the short answer is because simply because of the scale of the operations and the impact on society. And Carla has already outlined in particular how reliant and important mobile and inter internet access has been for all of us during COVID. But just to help you with a sense of scale, for example, I mean, Vodafone, we're a leading communications um, technology company. We operate in Europe, the UK and Africa. We've got mobile and fixed networks in 21 countries, and we've got partner networks in 48 more. So that gives us in totality 300 million plus mobile customers, which I think really gives you a sense of the, of the number of people that we could impact with our business. In terms of the impact on society, and I think I really you know, reflect on Bagani's comments around the digital divide and the importance of connectivity. I think you know, we have all seen um, you know, that in COVID, the right to access education for children, the right to play through gaming, for example, um, freedom of expression. I and mean, I've seen with my own children the importance of you know, maintaining and developing friendships online. It's been really, really critical for children to um, continue to develop and play their role in society. Having said that, I think, you know, going back to this point around scale of operations, so we have 300 million plus mobile customers, but these are customers that we know about because we contract directly with them. And, you know, what I would, I guess, talk about is, is around, you know, children as the unseen customer, if you like. So we know that parents buy mobiles for their children to use. Um, we know that parents you know, give children um, mobiles that they're, they're no longer using. What we don't know is exactly how many and, and ages and, and exactly, you know, what they're doing with those mobiles. And it's really hard to get hold of the data on things like this. I mean, I think if you, going back to Bagani's point about um, digital divide, you know, overall, globally, there are 97% penetration rates for smart smartphones but you know in some countries and regions it, it's it's very low and so globally that averages out of around 47 percent in the uk for example um you know it's quite astonishing to think that half, nearly half of children between the ages of five and ten own a mobile phone but you know we as operators don't necessarily know that because because they're not the ones that sign up for our services so i think it's that characteristic of the sort of unknown user if you like of your services but but also thinking about the particular qualities of children i, I don't know whether people have seen but the un um, published a report this year on children's rights in the digital environment and it called, calls out two things which really struck me one is the evolving capacities of, of children and their development so you know, if you think about what a children, a child of age three or five, you know, using um, their parents' mobile phone might need compared to a child of 15, you know, the, the needs are really different and you need to understand that differentiated um, need. And then secondly, of course, children can also often play more independently online. It's not perhaps when they're a lot younger and you're watching them playing on the floor with bricks or games or whatever. You don't necessarily know what what services they're using online, even if you've got parental control tools there. So I think it's, it's you know, taken all together, it's that, that scale of our operations, that the unknown um, number of children using our services and, and the different quality that they have compared to adult customers, for example. Thank you for that really important insights. And, and just as a follow-up, I wanted to ask you how, how at Vodafone do child rights connect with your wider business and human rights agenda? Yeah, I mean, we um, follow the UN guiding principles or are implementing the guiding principles throughout our operations like many companies. And um, you know, we've made a commitment in our human rights policy statement uh, to respect children's rights and, and address children's rights throughout our operations. I think, to be honest, I mean, you know, it's, this is great having this tool for, for mobile operators, but really all companies should be thinking about children and children's impacts. And I think the tool has wider applicability. 
But it, going back to some of the points that Carla was making, I think the tool has been really helpful in us addressing that particular agenda because it's not just around the issues of connectivity that we've talked about, but it's also or child online safety where we, you know we're heavily engaged in that debate. It's also around how do the wider operations affect it. So, you know, our family friendly policies that human resources develop, you know, how do they impact children of staff, for example, or our procurement, you know, thinking about where there might be child labor in our operations. So it's having that holistic approach, which I think the tool has been really helpful um, for. And um, as I said, I think, you know, it's children are vulnerable groups. We've, we've discussed this already, and therefore it's essential if you're following the UNGP to address them as a vulnerable, vulnerable group in their own right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Moira, for for sharing and and for and for joining us. We'll we'll come back with some more questions for you in a moment. But now I'd like to to turn also to to Mauricio. Uh, Millicom was of course instrumental in the creation of the original Mokria self assessment tool, as we mentioned before, and you've also implemented it. So quickly, uh, a word of introduction. Um, Mauricio is a regional corporate responsibility manager for Millicom and leads their child rights programs. He has more than ten years' experience working in ESG with the private sector, NGOs, and international organizations. Mauricio, I was wondering if you could uh, describe how how you use that original Mokria, what were your key findings and how did the process help you prioritize your overall sustainability strategy and work? Sure, absolutely. And Josie, and thanks for having us here. Um, so our journey mostly starts, you know, we were we were really uh, part of the, the the experimental phase of how to use this 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 tool. Um, so many years ago, and 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 the interesting thing is is that the the whole point of us going into trying to assess what sort of impacts we had in in in, in child rights was based on the assumption that there were associated risks to child labor, but with the work that we did with with UNICEF at the time and 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 the eventual creation of this tool. What it allowed us was to really broaden that scope of where those impacts can be going far beyond child rights. And it was actually understanding that child rights was one of the areas in which we did not, or better said, in which we had stronger um, policies in place that, that did not present that as the most important thing that we should be working on regarding child rights. So with, with the, the Mokria, it really allowed us to open our eyes in, into where more opportunities and potential risk were associated with child rights. And this is why we are very keen in recommending um, companies in the industry to, to, to use this tool precisely in that, in, that, in that sense. And one of the most important things that I think this tool allows a company to do is that it really allows you to engage with different stakeholders inside the organization that on a normal day to day basis don't have the um, exposure to really understand or the background even to really understand how what they do in the company has potential impacts and can be associated with with child rights. So when you sit down with the tool and start um, interviewing, for example, someone from the marketing team and asking these questions of, and, 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 and really see how they start to understand how their day-to-day -day work can have these sort of influence on child rights, that is one of the most important impacts that the tool actually has because it really allows you to bring this conversation to the rest of the organization and engage with everyone in a real, real um, in, a, in a way that they can really see it and feel it. And for us, that was key into where we were so many years ago and where we are today, because that using the tool and getting everyone engaged really allowed us to create this culture in which child rights is something that we consider every day today in our, in our activities as, a, as an organization. And also the results that it gave us really became the foundation of what we do in our uh, in our corporate responsibility programs today. And the clearer example for that is what we do in child online protection, which is one of our flagship programs and has evolved today in a broader understanding of child rights. But what, what we did uh, to start that program, the base of that was the results that came from the Mokria. So it really allows you as an organization to 
um, to give a, a, a true uh, explanation of where it is that you're coming from with your programs, why you are doing it, and also allows you to really engage with the rest of the of the operation. And that has been one of the one of the most important things that we have gained from the from the implementation for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mauricio, for, for sharing. And, and I think this is such an important point that you raise and, and something that we've tried also to cr create more resources uh, with the guide to help assessors and leaders in the organization do that internal awareness raising and communicating with different teams and colleagues around child rights issues and, and build that um, capacity internally. Uh, but now I'd like to turn to our, our final speaker, uh, as we've discussed already, one of the, the key changes to the updated MOCRIA is it's the increased depth on focus on the digital environment. And one of the important inputs to that was the industry guidelines on child online protection published last year. So a quick uh, word of, of bio. Uh, Mauricio is the head of, cyber of the cybersecurity division and currently acting as chief of the digital network society department in the telecommunication development bureau of the international telecommunication union the lead un specialized agency for icts and has been working in the field of icts for the past two decades thank you for joining us marco i was wondering from your perspective and from your work what do you see as the primary responsibility of mo mobile operators in terms of their child rights impacts Thanks, Josiane. And uh, can you hear me well? Yes? Can hear you perfectly. Thank okay, you. good. Well, thanks to you and thanks to everyone. Uh, greetings. And, uh, and thanks for, for UNICEF to have to having me here. Thanks for the introduction, by the way. So um, I would maybe start with a couple of considerations that might be useful to kind of uh, frame the discussion here. And, uh, you know, Maybe the first one is that you know we realize that kids and and, and children they actually love the mobile and and Mora 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 sorry said that and uh, and Carla said that and uh, and I mean it's easy to carry it's easy to use you can access almost everything and if you still don't believe me I mean come to my place maybe once and then you will see that uh, my kids five and ten they don't even say hello if they are dedicated and submerged into the into the into their into their appliances into their mobile this despite the screaming and the yelling that we exercise every day to to stop them to to accessing but you know that that, that that's a fact and we need we need to realize that in addition to this COVID uh, actually brought a massive shift from uh, from offline to online and and then of course uh, everyone is using uh, uh, more much more the uh, I mean and benefiting from the online experience uh, and again I mean uh, Teleworking at home, kids at home, uh, they can play around, but on a certain moment they end up uh, using uh, whether it's a tablet or, or a laptop or, or a mobile. So that that's uh, I mean it's it's also a fact that we need to be we need to be conscious so that even if it's of course obvious for 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 most of us, and and that generated a situation where you know there is a massive increase of of level of access, and uh, you know it is estimated that kind of one in three children are actually connected, and and most of them. Through, through mobile. So as usual, you know, when when you have a, an increased level of access, you have more 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 users. You know, automatically you have a certain increase of of the the the, the landscape in terms of threat, the trend landscape, and and you know attack vectors that are targeted at specific appliance. In this case, the mobile. So uh, another little data here is that you know the Internet Watch Foundation found out that uh, in 2020 uh, there is uh, kind of a more than 50% of uh, the CSAM with the child sexual abuse material is actually uh, self-generated. So it's a content self-generated. So the community itself is kind of incrementing and extending the, the threat landscape. For, uh, for for the users for the target users that are actually uh, kids and, and children so uh, we know that and and of course there is a, a specific role from our perspective that the mobile operator can play and uh, and they may be instrumental in trying to put in place uh, I mean corrective measures uh, uh, that could you know make sure or could they kind of ensure uh, a little bit more safer uh, online experience and uh, and you know mobile operator operators are in the middle because they provide access to and from the internet 
and also they own most of the data, even if I agree with Moira that sometimes data cannot be tracked properly in terms of who is using that specific appliance or that specific device. But we still believe that the mobile operators, they have, they have a key role to play. And I would articulate that in, in three, maybe three main areas. One is for sure protection and safety, uh, which is a little bit linked to also what Mokria was, was advocating, which is the, the safety by design. So put in place those measures uh, that put uh, instigate a little bit more control and a little bit more, uh, let's say, uh, let's say security, you know. Uh, so starting from the parental controls, for example, and uh, uh, have a little bit more uh, effective access control for uh, adult uh, uh, internet content, um, having a little bit more coordinated approach with the with the with the constellation of of uh, of helplines and 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 help desk and, and you know all this kind of uh, um, uh, reporting mechanism that are already in place. Um, for example, having the, the kids and the children easy access to the helplines and uh, as well as protecting the children confidentialities and routing possibly the calls to the, to the regional help, helpline hubs. Uh, and also, um, uh, I think that's, that's one of the key areas that uh, I think some of the, well, most of the communities are advocating is really to make sure that uh, mobile operators can develop and which they are doing by the way you know a strong uh, processes in terms of uh, uh, notice and takedown procedures uh, and reporting as well which is one of the main uh, or, or key one of the key uh, let's say measures that uh, are really effective in terms of removing uh, a specific content that can be dangerous for the online experience for kids. Uh, the second element is working uh, more uh, on, on the digital literacy and the awareness and the, and the kind of a skill set building for, for the kids and for the, for the children in order for them to um, have the right tools to, to, to face, you know, some of the specific threats. Um, and again, you know, access to the tools that, that might be useful for them, uh, be aware of the online risks and, um, and uh, you know, uh, kind of understand a little bit more what, what is the meaning of, of respectful online behavior. And uh, we have seen all over the place, you know, uh, in social media and in most of the apps that, you know, uh, ch children actually are putting content that in line of principle, it doesn't supposed to be there. But they are doing this anyway because there is no uh, sense of awareness in in their mind and in, from their perspective, right? And this is linked to a little bit to what Bengani was saying in terms of maybe creating platform for dialogues, uh, boot camps, or, or you know, uh, kind of uh, awareness raising campaigns. And and I mean, basically, make sure that also the kids has a as a voice. I mean, the children has a voice to raise, and and you know, and and there is a discussion on what are the possible threats that are coming from bullying to grooming, um, and and to to the others that uh, Carlo was also was also hinting to third what is third third element is maybe uh, also working on on collaboration and partnership and that's that's a topic that for me is, is quite bizarre because everyone is talking about cooperation international cooperation collaboration and uh, the amount of awareness that is there in a sense is not proportionate in terms of return of investment or how much we can do together you know and uh, there are different reasons for that maybe political maybe you know organizational uh, strategies and policies that each organization has in their own uh, kind of a business agenda but i think that there is much so much we can do in terms of pooling resources and working together in in making sure that uh, that you know we actually can give back to the community you know what what we what we are advocating of with with concrete concrete clear actions and you know there are so many examples already and i mean itu and, and unicef are working on a regular basis with gsma as well with child helpline international there are so many different organizations that are working on that i believe that there is a, a next level level of of commitment and, and engagement that we can achieve in in really trying to to align a little bit you know what what we are doing and coming out with the possibly you know co-produce and co-created products that to be useful uh, and used by, by the community instead of trying every time to 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 duplicate i mean and again it's not it's not an attempt on purpose but inevitably you know there is a certain level of of overlap and duplication that i think can be uh, maybe removed if we if we manage to 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 get together as as in sense we are we are already doing so uh, let's stop here and then uh, and then happy to to re-engage uh, at any given time thank you for those thoughts um i i would like to to now invite all the panelists to switch on their cameras to have a little bit more of of a of a discussion i see moira you have your your hand up is i'm not sure if you if you mean to <laughs> 
<laughs> no, okay. Accidental, so let's, sorry. <laughs> let's press. Um, no, so we let's uh, take a little bit of a, a step back. I want to invite uh, Anne again to to speak and uh, and to, to zoom in on 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 COVID nineteen and its impact. What do you think that how how has COVID nineteen impacted the the importance of child rights as a material issue for the sector? Thank you. Um, I think I mean. For obvious reasons, we've done quite a lot of work over the past year on, on how the COVID-19 pandemic might shape business and the sustainability landscape specifically. And um, there are quite some fundamental shifts which are affecting, of course, children, um, as, as we all know, um, either um, possibly a first-hand experience. They've been spending a lot more time online, especially during times of, of homeschooling. But um, I think it's really important to remember that homeschooling everywhere around the world has been a deeply unequal experience for a lot of children in terms of content and connectivity, skills and devices, um, as well as the availability of adults to support them. Um, but well, mobile operators have done a lot, have introduced a lot of initiatives as well to, to try and tackle these changes. But um, I think there was, you know, certainly some of those things are, are going to stick around for a long time to come. Um, but I think the offline world, you, we can't forget either, given strict restrictions to extracurricular activities and, you know, things that children were able to do. A lot of social interactions have moved even more online. Um, and some of my fellow speakers have mentioned some of the impacts of that. Um, but I think impacts of increasing offline um, risks have also been exasperated by the pandemic. So more widely related to rights of children, um, economic hardship that follow the pandemic will probably disproportionately impact most vulnerable children and mal may, um, we think, in the longer term heighten risks relating to, for example, child labour and trafficking, um, which is, of course, relevant um, to many, many business sectors. So. Um, that's where, again, I think the tool can be can be really useful to kind of see where, you know, shift, things are, are possibly shifting and um, making sure that children's voices are being heard going forward. Thank you. Um, thanks for that. Uh, I think it's it's also really it's it, 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 it's natural that we speak about COVID in, in all of the the topics that we're that we're mentioning, even if it's not necessarily a new issue. All of the issues have been heightened uh, and, and made more urgent. I, I want to, to to go back to to Moira to zoom in on on the actual process of a child rights impact self assessment and to ask what, in your perspective, is the value of doing something like this? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I think. You know, like any human rights impact assessment, what it what it brings is is a real laser light focus on on particular issues. Um, and we, we talked a bit already about how you know sometimes you know you don't necessarily think about children in, 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 in business or haven't done in the past. So I think you know the value in, in taking that that lens is really, really important. Um, I think you know, it helps you think about what you need to do differently and also brings in children into operational thinking. So when when we use the McCrea tool, we um, went through a process of, we engaged external consultants to help us with the process, but we also um, interviewed key people within our business. And I think Mauricio said that the importance of the tool in generating conversations with colleagues, that for us was a really, really powerful um, aspect of using the tool because, you know, we bought, we brought in, as I said, a new lens to people's existing thinking on certain things, but also we found a real engagement and willingness to understand in more depth. So that was incredibly valuable. I think it also helped us sort of what I call connect the dots. Um, so where we have existing policies and pockets of practice, you know, that that sort of, um, you know, the criteria in the tool between the baseline and the further actions really helped us see visually, you know, where, you know, where we're doing good things, where we've got got gaps that we need to fix and sort of help that overarching view and narrative. Um, and I think, you know, having having the really specific questions and um, the spreadsheet to work with gives you a clear sort of sense of recommendations that you need to implement. Um, so, you know, overall, really positive experience of, of doing it and um, looking forward to sort of taking it further. Thank you so much for sharing how you used it and what you got out of the process. That's that's really, really great to to hear. And we look forward to, to working more with you on this. I, I will hand back to, to Mauricio to, to ask, you know, we've 
several years have passed and the world has changed dramatically over the last couple of years. Where do you see the, the, the new and emerging challenges being and where does the industry need to prioritize its efforts now? Um, yeah, I think, you know, especially with what, 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 what happened last year and, and is still going on today with the, with the pandemic, I think that that accelerated a lot of the, a lot of the issues that were, that we already had a, a, a view on, but the, the acceleration of the need of access and the need of, of really understanding the use of, of connectivity and technology is one of the main uh, um, issues that have come up because it has been it has been too fast, and we, and we work in, in 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 countries where where governments have not been able to to really keep up with uh, with this with this new acceleration. So the gaps have been very very clear, and have been broadened in many cases. So the the the, the opportunity that we really have today is to really look into how as an industry we can partner with. With, with governments and other organizations to look into how, what our role can be into, into filling that, that gap, what our role can be in doing that. Because education today and the, the need, not just to, to have access, but to, to, to understand the use um, is something that is absolutely essential and, 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 and has become in the, in, especially because of what happened last, last, last year and is happening today has become even more important. So, you know, using the tool is very important and it's going to give you the picture of where those opportunities are. But then the big question comes in, okay, now what do I do? And I think there's a lot of potential in working together as an industry and working with governments and other, other organizations to really answer that question. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. I would like to, to now go back to to Marco and to to reflect on on the Mocrea self-assessment tool and, and how do you think that uh, it can be used or can be valuable to to companies mm -hmm. uh, thanks thanks Josiane and and I think uh, again I I engage more into the discussion because I think she she answered I mean being a first hand user and 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 she covered most of it but I I, I believe that as, as she said, and I agree with that, I mean, the tool doesn't have to be limited necessarily to the to the mobile operators. I think it's a tool that any corporation and an organization should adopt. And, and for, for that specific reason, because I think it helps to actually give a little bit of focus on what could be the potential impact on, 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 on rights, you know, for, 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 for children. And uh, that may not be known to, to the, the company itself. And, and I think, you know, this element of, of actually self-assessing is useful because it can give a perspective from the company, what are the elements that they are missing by default or simply not, not, not thinking of. So um, I think the tool can be a really a, a, good, a good way, a good mechanism to, to actually discover, you know, what are the, 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 the possible vulnerabilities from the policy perspective, from the operational perspective, and from, from also from, from the overall, I mean, a strategic uh, approach perspective that might be addressed. Now, the question is, as, as Maurice was saying, you know, uh, how uh, the organization can actually address that, specifically mobile operator, if, if they want, how can I, they can actually address this and what is next, you know? And that is, I think, also a, 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 the benefit of having a tool that not only give, you know, a, an understanding or capture, you know, the, 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 the kind of as, as is, but it has to also capture, it has the, the, the to be you know face you know and and of course then it's up to the to the specific organization to undertake a specific measure but I think you know a tool that will be able to to you know link you know what what is the current status with what has to be done is something that uh, has to be uh, from 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 my perspective in uh, run I mean with the, within any organization and specifically of course for mobile operator as I said before you know they are really in the middle of of, of the whole process here because they had the, the the data they have the traffic and they actually are the ones that are providing that are providing access yeah thank you for that Mauricio I, I, Marco I think there's uh, there's definitely something to be said for this process in any company of, of building uh, that that understanding uh, of impacts across the sort of unusual suspects of the topics you wouldn't necessarily automatically connect with children right off the bat to 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 start heading towards the close of this session, I want to, to return to Bongani 
and and ask you what would you say to all companies that were considering looking at their child rights impacts or, or using the Mokria self-assessment process, why, why in your words and in your, in, would you think that it's so important? Mm, um, thanks for that question. I think um, the tool itself, it's very important because um, it really reminds companies of the responsibility in um, respecting children's rights. Um, hence, it's so important. And I think um, up, up, above that, it also, um, speaks about their contribution on how to eliminate um, child labor, which is a very important topic as well, which um, I think companies really need to then um, implement this, this tool because of that. Um, it also guides them on how exactly can they go about in ensuring that there's a safe um, environment for children and not just children, also young people who um, work for the organizations as well. Um, the guide also um, speaks about ensuring the protection and safety of children, um, irregardless of any business activity that's taking place in that particular company. And hence, I believe it's so important uh, because um, over and above everything, it prioritizes human rights as well as children's rights. Um, and yeah, I, I basically think hence it's, 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 it's for those reasons that it's important that each and every company implements this guide. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for, for that, Bongani. We, we have only uh, a few minutes left, but there was a, a question in the chat, which I think starts to get at some of these practical implementation questions, which will be the focus of, of the workshops later on this year. So for a lot more of this kind of nitty gritty discussion, would really invite uh, everybody uh, who's interested in implementing it to, to join that, all, all the mobile operators who are interested. But, but the question was directed at, at Millicom and it, it asks, how does the application or the operal, oper, 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 Operate, oper, excuse me, I can't say the word, of the MOCRIA trickle down from the global level to, of the organization to the country level? Yeah, I like, I like to think of it the other way around, actually. So, so from the, let's say that from the global level, what, you, what you're looking for is just the approval for implementation. But I think that the real magic happens when you have the people who are on the ground, the ones that are in charge of the operations and of processes, when you have them filling out the tool and participating and engaging with the with with the whole process those insights when you take them back to to a global level that's where you have the engagement from the from that upper level so you look for that approval for the implementation and you look for everyone to be on board but it's it's until you actually see the insights of the people who are actually on the day-to-day -day work of the implementation of the of the of the different topics that the that the tool actually covers and and that are you know opening their eyes to 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 how they have a, a part and a role in this then then when you take that back is when you have the, the real engagement so there is where the next step happens which is you know okay what are the action plans that we're going to be implementing how are we going to take these results and how are we going to really look into opportunities and risk management in terms of of, of that so i think I, I like to think of it in uh in, in that direction i think Thank you. I think that, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, we're really looking forward to more of these practical uh, conversations when, when we have those workshops later in the year. But we are almost at the hour. So let us uh, conclude this, uh, this launch. Thank you, everybody, panelists, participants, again, for, for being with us. Uh, and we're really looking forward to continuing the conversation. Of course, our door is always open to conversations and to engagement. So we're really looking forward to to seeing uh, further action and, and how the tool is picked up within the industry. So very, very many thanks from us and uh, have a lovely rest of your day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.